Assalamualaikum and hi. Previously in chapter 6, we have learned about techniques of integrations. So now we're going to move on to the new chapter, which is chapter 7, application of definite integrals. So let's see. Um, these are the outline for the chapter 7. So for subtopic, the first subtopic, we learn about definite integrals. What is definite integral. Uh, for the next subtopic, we will learn about application of definite integrals. There will be three more subtopics in this uh, definite application of definite integrals. Uh, for the first one is areas between curves. Second one, volume of solids of revolution. And the third one is volume of solids generated by revolving the region between the two curves. So uh, for today, we only going to cover 7.1 up until 7.2.1. So let's see what is definite integral. Okay, definite integral, if f or the function f is continuous at every point of the interval a, b and if capital F is any antiderivative, oh, I'm sorry, and this one is antiderivative. So uh, you will have the definite integral written as integration of fx, a function of fx dx from a to b equal to capital F of b minus capital F of a. So what does it mean by capital F over here is that you're going to substitute the value of B into the X value. Uh, and for this one, you're going to substitute the A into the X value of the previous function. So let's see um, the properties of definite integrals. If F and G are integrable, F and G are Two functions integrable on closed interval a b and c is any constant then first you will have integration of function f x plus or minus integrate uh, integration of g x another function dx from a to b so now you have two functions two different functions um, which are going to sum or minus the two function. So all you can do is that you're going to split it up. Pisahkan dia, you're going to uh, split the two function previously. Uh, now you have integration of fx dx plus or minus integration of gx dx. You can write it down in this form. Okay, uh, so you're going to put the a the definite, definite mean uh, there will be a value for the integration. So previously we only learned how to integrate the techniques of integration, but now we're going to substitute values a and b into the x so that you can get a value. Okay, so you're going to split it up like this. And then for the second properties, you will have integration of constant of function dx you can write it down as this one is c a constant you can put it outside okay so it become c integration of fx dx from a to b a and b can be any numbers can be any values as well as the c constant just now it just that it make us it uh, it make the integration easier if you can put the constant at the front okay so the third property is that integration of fx from a to b is actually equal to integration of fx from a to c plus integration of fx the similar function fx also but from c to b okay uh, uh, there is uh, a condition for this one. Um, for A, 
for C, sorry for C in between A and B. The C must be in between A and B. Di antara A dengan B. So that you can write it down in this way. A to C and then sambung semula C to B. Okay. Um, the fourth properties is that integration of A to A. Integration of A to A. For fx dx equal to 0. Okay, let's say you have um, a value over here. The same value. Uh, integration of 1 to 1. 2 to 2. 4 to 4. It's similar, right? The starting value and the ending value over here is the same. So, you will get 0 for that. For that integration, you will get 0. Okay, kalau dekat sini dia, sama. Okay, the fifth property is integration from A to B for fx dx. Okay, this one is for fx dx. But it will become a negative integration of fx dx when the value over here, you interchange the value. Bila kita, bila kita terbalikkan. Kalau dari sini, it start from A integration from A to B but now dia tertukar uh, integration from B to A but the function still is same for function fx so you will get the uh, minus sign or the negative sign at the front because kita terbalikkan dia punya value the definite integrals okay so you will have negative okay that's um, the fifth properties for definite integral that you need to know. So, let's see the first example. The first example, integrate x square dx from a to b. Okay, so what you have to do first is you're going to integrate it um, like usually, macam biasa. Uh, so, you're going to integrate this part x square. So, when you integrate x square, you will get this one, right? x cube over 3. Uh, remember, kalau integration, you have to 2 plus 1. Integration, dia akan tambah 1. Then, you divide it by the new power. Uh, this is the new power, so you divide it by 3. And then, you're going to write a bracket for this uh, uh, integration. For this output, you're going to put a bracket over here and then write down back the definite integral, the a from a to b, a to b. And remember, a is the smallest, b is the biggest. Uh, kita akan mula dari yang small ke yang big, yang besar, the largest. So, you will write down as this, like this lah. Integration of, uh, sorry, x cube over 3 bracket a to b. What does it mean by the bracket? Uh, you going to substitute the value of a and b later on in this well, uh, in this uh, function over here. So after this, we going to substitute first with the largest, right? This is the largest. This is yang largest. Okay, this is the largest. This is yang smallest. Uh, Yang dekat bawah ni always yang smallest. So, you can minus yang besar, the largest, minus the smallest. So, you're going to substitute first the b into the x. So, it's no longer x. It will become b cube over 3 minus. Then, you substitute the a value over here into the x. a cube minus 3. Uh, sorry, a cube over 3. And it's always minus over here. Okay, antara ini B dan A dia always tolak, ah minus kan dia. Okay, so you have this value. This is the answer. Ah, this is the final answer because we don't know what is the A and B value. So you're just going to write it down it as this way. Okay, let's see the next example. Given integration of uh, f x dx from 2 to 5 
equal to 4. Okay, it's already given. The value is already given. You don't need to find what is fx over here. But then, you need to find integration of fx dx, the same function. It's just that the only difference is this. You can see 2 and 5. Previously, we have from 2 to 5. Now, you will have 5 to 2. The terbalik. So, remember what from the uh, third or fourth properties previously, we have this one can in the pink box over here. If you have integration of from A to B for a function, then if the uh, value of A and B is interchange, kita terbalikkan dia. So, the B dekat bawah, A dekat atas. So, you will have a minus sign over here. Uh, so, of course, you can find this, can? Uh, integration from 5 to 2 fx dx will become, you have the value 4, you just need to add on the negative sign because they dah terbalikkan this. They terbalikkan this 2 to 5, this is 5 to 2. Uh, you just tambah negative 4. Okay? And then, for example 3, find the integration of 2 dx from 0 to 2. Okay, this is a constant 2, right? So, what you have to do is you're going to integrate 2. You're going to integrate this constant first, 2. So, you integrate 2, you get 2x. Uh, you get 2x. So, remember to put the bracket over here, uh, 2 and 0. Uh, we always write it down in this way because... After you integrate, you put it into bracket, which means that next for the next step, you're going to substitute the 2 and 0 into the x. Okay, now you can substitute 2 times 2. This is 2, right? They always substitute with the largest, then minus the smallest. The smallest is 2 times 0. Uh, 2 times 0. Okay. Okay, this one is this one. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me rest first. Okay. This one is number 2 over here. This is 0 for this one. So you just calculate. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 0, you will get 4. Okay. Or there is another way for that, which is this one. Integration of 2 dx from 0 to 2 is equal to 2. You write it down the 2 over here. Just write it down. 2. And in the bracket, 2, this one, put it into the bracket, and the 0 over here. Uh, so, you will have, you just multiply with this. 2 times, 2 times, uh, sorry, 2 plus 0, you will get 2. So, 2 times 2, you will get 4. So, this is another method based on this, uh, this properties integration of a to b for a constant c you can write it down in this way c the constant in the bracket b the largest plus the smallest uh, so i believe that it is much easier to write it down in this form right uh, uh, you can where you can see it clearly first you need to integrate then you need to substitute the value okay yeah, it's up to you. You can use both. Uh, let's see the next example. Example 4. Integration of 7 dx two from 2 to 2. Okay, remember, we're going to check back for uh, the properties, the previous properties we have learned. If we, we have the values of the definite integral is the same. A from A for fx dx, the the value for the integration will you will get zero. Any, let's say this one integration of seven dx from two to two. Okay, so uh, to prove that seven x seven when you integrate you will get seven x. So now you're going to substitute this two into x, this two into x. Then you're going to minus it, right? The largest minus the smallest. Okay, seven uh, x. You replace x with 2 minus, again 7, you replace x with 2. Then, this thing minus, you will get 0. Uh, so, no matter how uh, 
what is the value over here whether it is 2 or 3 or 4 or so uh, and so on if the value over here and this one is the same you will get the answer as 0 okay Okay, how about this integration of x squared plus 1 dx from 1 to 2? Okay, uh, you will have, let's integrate it first. Kita integrate yang ni dulu. Integrate x squared, you will get x cubed over 3. Integrate 1, you will get x. And don't forget to put a close bracket over here and just write it down the 2 and 1 which means that you're going to substitute the value later on into this. Okay, then you're going to substitute the 2 value into x. Uh, so, 2 to the power of 3, you will get 8. This one is 2 to the power of 3. Uh, this one pula adalah 1 to the power of 3. Uh, 1 to the power of 3. Dia, dapat, dia ganti masuk daripada yang di sini. Uh, then, x dekat sini ganti masuk dengan 2. And x dekat sini ganti masuk dengan 1. And always, the largest minus the smallest. Then, you get, you can calculate it. Then, you get 10 over 3. Easy, right? And then, the next example, evaluate integration of x cubed plus 1 dx from negative 1 to 3. From negative 1 to 3. Okay, let's see. Uh, you need to integrate this first. x cubed plus 1. We integrate x cubed, you will get x to the power of 4 over 4 plus integrate 1, you will get x. Then, don't forget to write down the bracket. Sorry, from negative 1 to 3. Then, you're going to substitute the value Okay, so how do you get 81 over here is 3 to the power of 4. Okay, uh, and this one, how do you get 1 over here is because negative 1 to the power of 4. Okay, uh, then yang ni ganti masuk lah. Gantikan masuk semua ni dengan 3, then kita minus. Kenapa dia ada tambah dekat sini? Is because sepatutnya dia tolak kan? Maybe dekat sini dia ada value yang negatif. Ah dekat negatif so dia negatif campur uh, negatif ah that's why dia tambah dekat sini. So idea you will get 24. Okay, let's see more example. Yeah, now it's involve integration of exponent. Ah uh, remember exponent is the easiest because you will get back the exponent. Okay, integration of exponent 2x dx from 0 to 1. So, uh, previously in chapter 5, you have, uh, yes, in chapter 5, if I'm not mistaken, uh, if you integrate exponent 2x, integrate exponent 2x, you will get exponent 2x back. Uh, dapat semula yang itu, exponent 2x, but then you divide by the uh, over here, why do you, you divide by 2? Because of the 2x over here. Then you're going to substitute it with 1 and 0. Uh, so you ganti masuk lah. Since this one you have 1 over 2, kan dia over 2. So you put it down, oh sorry, you write it the 1 over 2 at the front. Keluarkan dia. So yang tinggal cuma x as exponent 2. This one dia dah ganti masuk 1 ganti masuk minus exponent 0 ni dapat ni ini adalah exponent 0 if you calculate using calculator exponent 0 you will get 1 uh, this one dia just ganti masuk dengan yang ni so itulah jawapannya ok uh, more example integration of 3x square oops Okay, export integration of 3x square times square root f square root of x cubed plus 1 dx from negative 1 to 1. So um, remember we have learned in chapter 6 about the techniques of integration. You can use by part or you can use uh, substitution method. So now let's see, uh, let's use the 
substitution method where you will have u and du so in here of course kita akan pilih yang complicated tu sebagai u so this part will become your u and then the remaining the remaining dia punya yang baki saki baki yang tinggal you will have 3 x square the x will become du ah saki baki dia ni akan jadi du so since this one yang ni kena hati-hati. Since you dah tukar dia jadi substitution, it's no longer x. Dekat sini kita dah pakai u and du. So, since this one is dx, the whole thing involve dx and x. So, it start from negative 1 to 1. But for this one, since you change it already, you substitute it with u. So, of course, the integral part will also change. Dia akan berubah juga. So, when x equal to negative 1, we start with the smallest. When x equal to negative 1, our u will become, kita ganti masuk dia, negative 1 to the power of 3 plus 1, you will get 0. Okay. That one is when u equal to negative 1. How about when u, eh, sorry, that one is for x equal to negative 1. Okay, next, we're going to substitute x equal to 1 over here. Uh, x equal to 1. u equal to 1 cube plus 3. So, you'll get 2. So, the new integration, this one, you will have, the definite integral will become from 0 to 2. Uh, so, you will get the new uh, integration. Uh, u d u. Okay. Because you change it. You change it already. This one is the x in term of x. Now, you since you have used the substitution method, the whole thing is going to change of course, as well as the integral, the value over here. So, let's see. Uh, so, you will have this one. Integration of u du. But this one, this is in, uh, apa ni? In, uh, ada, kita ada square root over here. Yes. Uh, can di, we only substitute the, with the u with x cubed plus 3. Not the whole thing with the square root. Okay. So, all you have is this integration from 0 to 2 u du so remember u uh, what is this we call the square root of u is actually we can write it down in this from 1 over 2 uh, so bila kita integrate u to the power of 1 over 2 so you going to plus 1 kan uh, bila you plus 1 dia akan jadi u to the power of 3 over that's why dia ada yang ni 3 over 2 so bila kita ni bila kita integrate dia akan jadi macam ni u to the power of 3 over 2 you going to divide it with this 3 over 2 so bila kita write it down again this is 2 0 so, then you will get this. 3 over 2, bila you bawa naik ke atas, dia akan terbalik macam ni. 2 over 3. Uh. So, you going to substitute lah the value. Ganti masuk dia. Ganti masuk dengan 2. First, you going to substitute with 2. Uh, dia ke dalam u ni. And then, you going to substitute the u with 0. And then, you will get this answer. Okay. It's up to you whether you can use the square root form or you can write it down in the point form or in fraction. Still, uh, you will get the correct answer. Okay, uh, that's all for the seven, eight, eight examples which uh, involve the properties we have learned previously and as well as the application of the techniques of substitution which you have learned in chapter 6 so you might want to try this exercise only one exercise integration from 0 to 1 for x exponent 3 x dx so what method you're going to use uh, it's up to you 
as long as you get the right answer. Okay? 